I am Gene Adams, and you're listening to Gospel Tangents. Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. We're a proud member of the Dialogue Podcast Network, a collective of independent, interesting podcasts who promote thoughtful, respectful, and engaging inquiry and discussion of all aspects of LDS tradition, thought, arts, and culture. For more information, go to dialoguejournal.com slash podcast network. That's all one word, dialoguejournal.com slash podcast network, and you can see the other podcasts that are part of our wonderful network. I think there are not very many people who are aware of a group known as the Hedrickites. They're a group that was started by a man named Granville Hedrick, and they were the first to return to Missouri following the expulsion in 1838 of Mormons there. So we're going to talk more about this with historian Gene Adams. He's a former president of the John Whitmer Historical Association. And we're going to learn a lot more about this group whose official name is the Church of Christ. It's going to be a really fun conversation and you won't want to miss it. Check out our conversation. Well, welcome to Gospel Tangents. I'm really excited to have another awesome historian. Could you go ahead and introduce yourself? My name is Gene Adams. And uh, I live in Woodenville, Washington. Woodenville, you're a long way from home. Long way from home. I come here to, to Salt Lake to do a lot of uh, research and study and, and, you know, that sort of good thing. Yeah, we're here at the Church History Library, and so you can tell this is a serious historian. <laughs> <laughs> now, could you tell me a little bit about your background, uh, like your educational background and that sort of thing? Sure. I, uh, I grew up in Salt Lake and in Denver and then back to Salt Lake City. Went to the University of Utah. Yeah, go Utes. Go Utes. And got my uh, bachelor's in accounting and my MBA. Oh, wow. And graduated a long time ago. Wow. Yeah. So accounting, that doesn't sound like history. <laughs> except for yeah. I have to tell you something funny. So I talked to Elder Snow um, just yesterday, actually. And he got his bachelor's in accounting. I did not know that. I didn't know that either. Yeah, so that was interesting. Well, one thing I did learn in accounting, though, is to follow the audit trail. Okay. And that pertains directly to research and church history. Oh, wow. If you can follow the names or the places or the events, it's a real, real big help. Oh, wow. Well, interesting. I never thought about that, but somebody pointed that out to me along the road, and I've been glad that for it ever since. I've always had an interest in church history. Um, I've got pioneer heritage. Okay. Um, I was not raised as a Latter-day Saint. Oh. Uh, joined the church when I moved to Salt Lake uh, my sophomore year in high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I learned more about my... Which high school did you go to? Highland High. Highland High, the Rams. The Rams. We, we beat the Rams in the, in the playoffs and, uh, when I was in high school. So Yeah. Well, that's probably <laughs> more recent than when I went there. And so then I, uh, I did uh, a couple of years in the Army and a couple of years on an LDS mission. And... Uh, finished my education. I did spend one year at Duke University oh, wow. uh, on a scholarship arrangement. And uh, after I graduated, I went to work for Western Airlines in Los Angeles, California. Western Airlines. The only way to fly. Now, that not that in the movie Fletch? I think there's a Western Airlines. Yes. Plane. Yeah, yep. I thought mm -hmm. so. Yep. So. And I they got up. bought out by Delta. They got bought out by Delta. I'd, I'd left by then. Okay. And have spent the last uh, 40 years in the Northwest running fishing companies and doing a variety of things. Wow. So my interest in history had to kind of just go along with it mm -hmm. until I retired. And I guess this is a good introduction to what you wanted to talk about specifically, but uh, my wife uh, had raised the subject of family history mm -hmm. along the way. And I told her when we, when we retired, I'd jump right into it and do her family history. And so now you get to ask the magic question. What's the name, right? Yeah. Hedrick. Oh, your, your wife is a Hedrick. My wife is a Hedrick. And she said she had never told that to anybody because no it, had, way. it had some connotations that weren't what she wanted to convey when she was a convert herself at 14 in Los Angeles. Oh, really? And uh, Because I don't think very many people know who Granville Hedrick was. No, no. That's so, interesting that she was kind of hiding that. So after after she had been baptized, her mother sat down and told her about her Mormon history. No way. Yeah. Wow. And uh, but she didn't want to tell anybody about that. You're kidding. So me. when she told me about that, I got quite excited. Yeah. I, she, you know about the Hedrickites? And I said, I know a little. 
And I says, I guess we're going to go find out a lot. Oh, wow. And so let's start with your dad's name, or your, your ancestor's name. Granville Hedrick was my great-great uncle. Okay. His brother was John. And John Hedrick is the first saint of any sect that came back to Jackson County in 1865 wow. and scouted out the place for the movement of the whole Crow Creek branch out of Illinois in 1867. And he then started buying up the Temple Lot property that same year in 1867. So it was John Hedrick, not Granville. That is correct. Oh, I did not know that either. Yes. Yes. Wow, yes. that's interesting. Yes. In fact, uh, when, the, when the entourage of the various families all moved out of Illinois, that would have been in the winter of 1867, miserable time to come, uh, Granville Hedrick actually delayed and came a little bit later and ended up out in uh, eastern Kansas. He did not settle, actually, in Independence along with where everybody else in the church had settled. Wow. Yeah. Uh, John Hedrick was killed in a runaway horse uh, wagon situation mm. and uh, tragically and so another guy by the name of Bill William Eaton is uh, another old member of the church uh, I say the original church uh, he finished buying up the other lots that had been subplotted by that point in time until they had a contiguous eight lots which encompassed the spot where Joseph Smith had dedicated the temple site Wow! and they both John and he, uh, at different times, then quit claimed their properties that they'd bought. John bought three art, three lots, and and Eden bought five, and they quit claimed them to Granville Hedrick as trustee and trust, and he subsequently has done that to other leaders of the church from then till now. Wow. Well, that's really interesting. So I had to tell you, I, uh, I think I did tell you this before, but for the, the listeners at home. So uh, I, in June, I went to Kansas City. Uh, I was grading AP tests, and I, I spent an extra week because I wanted to spend some time in Independence. And I got, had the opportunity. I think I talked uh, poor Randy Sheldon's ear off. Yeah. Um, so his, I believe his father was an apostle. Yes, right? William. William. Bill. And so uh, I, we probably talked for about six hours. Unfortunately for me, he would not agree to an on-camera interview, but it was a fascinating conversation. So I'm sure it was. It was, it was really cool. I so. had lots of conversations with his father. Oh, really? Over several years, and we became very good friends. I'll, I'll definitely have to let Randy know we've, we've got you on here. Yep. So. so he'll he'll be able to tell us if you get anything wrong there. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so... Um, so tell us a little bit about um, Granville Hedrick. Uh, you know, he it was it was all one church at one time, and how did he kind of separate and, and come back and that sort of thing? Well, uh, based on one or two different sources, he joined the then LDS Church in about 1843. Okay. And in Nauvoo must have been. No, in North Central uh, Illinois. Okay. Okay, Woodford County. And that's where there was a branch of the church. Uh, there's also a couple other ones that are close by. There were three of them that were with Bloomington area. Mm -hmm. um, Eagle River was one. And um, the other one was uh, uh, Crow Creek as to what they kind of all eventually merged into. Uh, they were not bothered with the exodus of the Latter-day Saints. Nobody bothered them. They continued to go right on uh, farming and doing what they did. How far away is this from Nauvoo, approximately? Do you know? Uh, Any idea? Maybe 140 miles. Oh, so it's far. Yeah. Okay. Um, not sure exactly without going back to my notes. but yeah, that's uh, fine. Uh, the, the result was is that uh, they were just doing fine, and, you know, but there wasn't a lot of... Uh, missionaries or other church leaders that went through the area and they started keeping their own record about 1852 and when the announcement was made in Salt Lake that they heard of that uh, from the pulpit the practice of plural marriage was uh, advocated or authorized that's when they separated themselves hmm. um, and they eventually picked the name that the original church had itself that is the Church of Christ, right? And that's 
the name that they went by, even though they continued to use the name of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints well up into 1900. I found lots of things that show that. Oh, really? But that's not surprising because several of the other breakoffs or different expressions of the Restoration used the same thing. Well, and I know the RLDS Church used the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day yep. Saints for a long time and until we really got into the polygamy prosecutions yep. and then they decided to distinguish yep. themselves. So. And so that's not, that wasn't uncommon for some of those groups. Uh -huh. um, at, any, at any rate, in 1864, well, first of all, he published a pamphlet in 1856 about the evils of plural marriage. Okay. Um, and that kind of fit nicely along with uh, a lot of friends and people that he knew that were in the then new organization mm -hmm. that later became the reorganized church, officially 1860. Uh, they tried on once or maybe two or three times actually to see if they could merge. But Granville and his people had an issue with the uh, uh, lineage issue. Oh, okay. yeah, so just for those who are at home, uh, I believe that Joseph Smith III reorganized the church on April 6th, 1860. That's correct. And that, that was that in Independence? No. That was in, where was that? It was up uh, a little further north in Illinois. Oh, so it wasn't in Nauvoo either? No. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Was it Amboy? It was in Amboy. Amboy. That's where it okay. was. Yeah. I know they've had some conferences, I believe, in the John Whitmer Historical Association. Yeah, I've been there, there. for the one that was in Amboy. As I'm fact. hoping. Yeah, that's the, that's the only reason I remember the name uh, was because there was a conference yeah. there. Um, and I'm hoping this fall to go. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to try to get Bill Shepard on, and he he's twisting my arm pretty hard, so I might I might go. It'll be my first time for John Whitmer. So. Oh, good. We'd love to have you. Yeah. I, 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 I do a lot of work for football, and it's always been during football season. It makes it hard to get off, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to do my best. I'm a past president of the John Whitmer group. Oh, that's what I, oh, yeah. yeah I, I, so I, I'm really devoted to them. Oh, well, good. Yeah, because yeah, I thought, I, I, I believe I asked Alex Baugh if you were uh, president of the Mormon History Association, and he said no, and it was, it was John Whitmer. Okay. Correct. Yeah, well, fantastic. I belong to the Mormon History Association. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So, and and I saw you. We just couldn't meet up uh, last month or whenever it was. Yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed our conversation with historian Gene Adams. In our next conversation, we're going to talk about an angelic visitation to Granville Hedrick. So, in 1864, he, he gets this revelation, uh, claims an angel uh, delivered it to him, and I've I've talked to actually one of the members of the, the uh, Church of Christ, who's long since uh, left us. But um, he remembers as a boy his, uh, being told exactly this was the bed that Granville received his revelation in. Oh, wow. So the, even the bed had been passed down through the generations. Anyhow, uh, he was instructed to return in 1867. So The angel said return in three years. Yep. Okay. okay. And so that's what they did. They went back in 67. My estimates are is that there were somewhere between 60 and 100 members of their church that made the pilgrimage back to, to Missouri. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please support Gospel Tangents and become a subscriber. For just $5 a month, go to uh, patreon.com slash gospel tangents and you can hear the entire interview. And you can also get uh, transcripts available at either our Amazon website or if you want to give the money to me and not Amazon, please subscribe on my website at gospeltangents.com and you can click the yellow subscribe button. Of course, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other places. Uh, make sure you subscribe on iTunes at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents. And don't forget to click here to subscribe on YouTube here for a transcript. And over here, we've got some more of our great videos. Thanks again for listening.